I think we're going to call it. Geek Ledger, breaking news. Sony Pictures has purchased Alamo Draft House. What? Hold on. Is that for real? Wow. Wait a minute. What happened? Sony, Sony was so pissed off with the talks with Paramount that they decided to go after somebody else? All right. Hold on. I got I to gotta check this news out. Oh, here it is. Wow. I'm here on The Hollywood Reporter. All right, I'm going to share this article with everyone. This is something to go to close off on for sure. Sony Pictures acquires Alamo Drafthouse Cinema in landmark deal that puts studios back in theater game. Isn't this what I've been saying before? I was saying, and I don't remember if I said this on, on stream or in a video or if I was just talking to friends. Eventually, we're going to see studios buying up uh, theater chains in order to justify putting their movies out in theaters and not worry about streaming and all that. And now Sony has a platform to showcase their films because they they have no streaming service. They I know they wanted to talk with Paramount and probably work out a deal with them so that they could have Paramount Plus and Sony stuff together. And that didn't that didn't work out, right? And then now we also found out that Sundance and Paramount didn't come to any agreement, so that deal is out. But wow, this is big news. Geek Ledger, I thought yeah, I thought this was also illegal too, but I guess now there's something going on. So let's read this. So for more than seven decades, studios weren't allowed to own an exhibition company under the Paramount consent decrees, which were, oh, they were rescinded in 2020. See, that I didn't know. All right. In a groundbreaking moment, Sony Pictures Entertainment has acquired Alamo Drafthouse in a deal that puts major Hollywood studio back in business of owning a movie theater for the first time in more than 75 years. From 1948 until 2020, the U.S. Department of Justice prohibited film distributors from owning an exhibition company under what was known as the Paramount Consent Decrees, which arose from a 1948 U.S. Supreme Court ruling. The decrees essentially dismantled the old Hollywood studio system by forcing the majors to divest of their theater holdings. See, I didn't know that that thing ended in 2020. So that's really interesting to see. At that time, the majors essentially controlled all aspects of filmmaking, from the talent to the productions to the theaters. The decrees forced exhibitors to stop practices like block booking, bundling multiple films into one theater license, and circuit dealing, entering into one license that covered all theaters in the theater circuit. The landscape was radically different then, however. There were no multiplexes but one screen theaters that could play one movie for months, a scenario which played into favoritism. Sony is the first major Hollywood studio to step forward and test the waters since the decrees were rescinded. The only major film producers to acquire theaters since 2000 were Netflix and Amazon. Yeah, Netflix has a theater here in New York City, the Paris Theater. They also, like this article is about to say, they have the Egyptian Theater in L.A. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Amazon had the same aim when buying the old Arclight location in downtown Culver City in Los Angeles. I'm a huge fan of Arclight, by the way. Uh, although that cinema is a first-run theater, meaning Amazon has to book new movies in addition to its offerings. In a reverse twist, the world's largest cinema owner, AMC Theaters, got into the distribution business last year when acquiring rights to Taylor Swift's Eras Tour documentary. Uh, Alamo filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in 2021 when it was still reeling amid the COVID-19 pandemic. I know they also closed down a bunch of their locations across the country, too. Altamont Capital, Fortress Investment Group, and League emerged as its owners post-bankruptcy. Sources say other parties looking at Alamo included Cinemark and major exhibitor in Latin America. Alamo is hardly the only exhibitor who considered or is considering uh, bankruptcy in the aftermath of the pandemic and the writers and actors strikes, which has slowed the content pipeline to a trickle. Wednesday's announcement stressed that Alamo Draft House, an independent chain with 37 locations that has been at the forefront of in-theater dining and other consumer-friendly initiatives, will continue to be run 
by Alamo CEO Michael Kusterman under a new division that he'll also be in charge of Sony Pictures Experiences. Sony said the deal reinforces its long-held commitment to theatrical exhibition and continued initiatives in experimental entertainment. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Here's a quote. We are excited to make history with Sony Pictures Entertainment and have found the right home and partner for Alamo Drafthouse Cinema, said Kusterman uh, in a statement. We were created by film lovers for film lovers. We know the, how important this is to Sony, and it serves as further evidence of their commitment to the theatrical experience. Together, we will continue to innovate and bring exciting new opportunities for our teammates and moviegoers alike added Tom Rothman, chairman and CEO of Sony Pictures Motion Pictures Group. Alamo Drafthouse has always held the craft of filmmaking and theatrical experience in high esteem, which are fundamental shared values between our companies. I'm jazzed that our company is doing this. Saying Alamo will continue to operate all 35 of its cinemas. They own Fantastic Fest. Blah, blah, blah. Company's headquarters still remains in Austin, Texas. Uh, let's see. And then they're talking about some of the experiences that they do. Sony also owns Crunchyroll. That also does a lot of um, kind of uh, special theatrical releases, too. So guess what? Expect Alamo to be holding a lot of anime festivals, film festivals. And then it gives a little bit of history about Alamo Drafthouse. We are beyond thrilled to join forces with Sony Pictures Entertainment to expand our company vision to be the best damn cinema that has ever or will ever exist now in ways we could only ever dream of, said Alamo founder Tim League. Uh, on one hand, Alamo has been battling serious financial problems. That, I mean, it's a win for Alamo. I will say that for sure. And obviously, it's a win for Sony. The only theater chain in the country with a very specific and well honed personality. One you can trace back to the company's roots of single room theater founded in downtown Austin. Yeah, I guess my only question is. How much, how much of the personality of Alamo will remain? My only fear is that it may end up becoming corporate. I don't think that's the case. If they let them continue to run things the way they want to run it. Yeah, see, this article says the same question. Will Alamo be able to keep its independent spirit now that it's under major studio ownership? Although, generally speaking, studios aren't involved with such things as pre-show ads or cinema policies. That's up to the exhibitors. Yeah, I this article mentions that a lot of the stuff that Alamo does that I personally appreciate has always been like kind of like the pre-show stuff, kind of how like they parody on the movie that you're about to watch. They pull up a lot of stuff from the Internet. Um, it's a fun experience, especially for cinema like cinephiles. Wow, that is such big news. Thank you, Geek Ledger, for letting me know about that. Wow. Uh, let me get to some of the chats. Star-Lord Theater Never Dies. Time for more Christian Stewart movies and guys getting busted. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, what's going on, Tech Rider? How's it going? Uh, Sherry Redstone, Kamikaze, the deal when Skydance wanted to do stock buyback and go private so they could just make movies and not have to deal with Wall Street. Yeah, that was crazy. Tony Parks when? Well... I don't know. I feel like now there's going to be a lot of Sony specific property movie festivals and events at Alamo now. Sony also bought Funimation. That's correct. Yes. I think Alamo was the only theater chain left that didn't run ads, only trailers. Um, well, yeah. Well, they, they, they curated their content of pre-show stuff. So unlike Regal that has this newbie thing where they do a lot of advertisements and a lot of tie-ins to movies or AMC with the Nicole Kidman stuff and all their advertisements and trivia and all that stuff, 
Um, Alamo themselves catered the pre-show experience with uh, funny little vignettes, you know, things that they pull from YouTube, um, parodies that they find, little things, little funny quips here and there. So I hope they maintain that because that is indeed the charm of Alamo Draft House, uh, especially the indie nature of it all. But you also see like Alamo has been trying really hard to get more in with bigger Hollywood, right? They're, they're doing a lot of first time screenings, special premiere screenings, um, at least the ones here in New York. They are doing a lot of see it first for the first time before anyone else, like weeks ahead of time. So now Sony has a venue to kind of do a lot of that stuff. Uh, Sony, outside of Columbia Pictures, they do have an indie sector to their business. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of that stuff involved in it all. But this sets a major, major precedence moving forward now. Um, and I, like I said, I guess since Sony doesn't really necessarily have a streaming platform, now they have a movie theater chain, you know? So you have Netflix with their kind of movie theater chains or their movie theaters, the Egyptian in LA, the Paris theater here in New York, uh, Amazon with their Arclight, but they, they kind of run it more as a regular movie theater chain because they have to show first run movies along with their own movies and MGM titles. Now we have Sony with Alamo. Wow. Big, big deal, man. This is crazy news. Crazy news. What does everyone think about it? You know what they say about theaters with big screens? Uh, they have longer run times? My local theater chain does local ads and movie trivia, which is a little more digestible. Yeah, I like it when you have more of that local feel. This is crazy news, man. I, I, I wow. Could you imagine how this would? One, I'm happy for Alamo because now they have a, a major studio that is now backing them, funds wise, right? Because yeah, they have been suffering financially for a while. Um, I also think they expanded a little bit too fast. I forget how many theaters they closed down across the country, but when they filed for bankruptcy, they did close down a good amount. Uh, recently, they announced, uh, was it last week, that three theaters in the Texas area alone had to be closed down, Alamo, like three or four. So I think a lot of people were freaking out about that and were kind of speculating that this could be the potential end of Alamo. So it's nice for someone to come in and rescue them in a way. What the implications are afterwards, I'm not sure. But I think this is one of the best moves Sony has made in the last couple of years, to be honest with you. Because we all see that their video game division is suffering. And I don't think they have a clear idea of what they're doing there on that, on that front. Their technology division hasn't been that great or has been like in the top spot for a while now. You know, with companies like Samsung and LG doing better. So this is a major win for Sony, I think, in my opinion. You know, and now Sony has a place to focus their releases on, hold screenings for some of their stuff. And I think this allows Alamo to do more of what they've been trying to do. But I think it's safe to say that the majority of us will hope that they maintain their independent nature and their charm and personality that Alamo has kind of made us familiar with and we are accustomed to. Because it would really suck if they start becoming a little bit corporate. Uh, that would be a shame. But at the same time, it wouldn't be a surprise because it's business, right? And that tends to happen. So I guess this, this kind of, for now, leaves Sony off the hook in attempts to try to create a streaming platform or partner with someone for a streaming platform because they are the first studio to really put focus on theatrical distribution instead of streaming. So I kind of, you know, commend them for that with that type of focus. I think that's a really good, good job on their part. 
you know so we'll see what how it'll be interesting to see how the other studios react to all of this and the fan base out the outside too like the cinephiles and all that I, i'm very curious what the discourse is going to be because this is going to definitely blow things up uh, i think sony has partnered with netflix for first run streaming and disney plus for second run streaming is that legit or do you think that's what they're going to do eventually like i don't think that's currently the case right that's a deal they signed last year oh, okay I wasn't aware of that. So they got all their ducks in a row, I think, at this point. Could could we say that maybe Sony is a big winner of the week? Alamo definitely is. Because I think they got rescued. And I'm happy for that. That theater chain deserves to be around. Why can't we get video game theaters? Imagine that. Hey, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if there was going to be a theater chain that would possibly have, like, Video game like events, I could see Alamo being that theater chain to do that, especially since they have locations across the country. The last duck they need is a TV station. I mean, if Paramount or Disney ever sells off CBS or ABC, like there have been rumors of, they would be set. I wonder though, at this point in time, is it important to own a network station? Is it still important? I guess, maybe, right? For like the older generation, theaters compete online multiplayer and winner takes all theater revenue. <laughs> Although that would be kind of cool if they had, um, if they had uh, theater multiplayer events where you have people like competing with each other in all the theater locations with online multiplayer, like a giant battle. And everyone's playing on the big screens. That would be kind of funny. How much, how much further along do we start hearing about conversations of other studios maybe potentially partnering with a Regal, a Cinemark, or an AMC? I'm curious. I'm curious as to what's going to happen there. And I guess that would be a conversation to have at another time altogether. Right? 